Hi guys. Hello. Welcome. So, <coughs> so myself Karthik Anand. Uh, I will be driving this presentation on the workshop on Scrapy. So, before before we move on, let me like try to understand the crowd. Uh, how many of you are from or students or from academics? Oh, may not be student. <laughs> Okay, so you are student. Okay, so rest of the people are like um, working for some company and programmers. Okay, cool. So and like, how many of you already uh, have done some sort of scraping? Oh, cool. So have you used Scrapy before or aware of Scrapy? You are okay. So it might be a little basic for you guys, like uh, whoever have already done or used Scrapy, but uh, I, I definitely like those who haven't like used Scrapy, it would be an uh, interesting uh, workshop, I believe. So the, um, the primary motive of this workshop is when you go out, if you can like do some of your own scraping projects, like uh, to solve some of your uh, problems. Mm, for example, if you had to know like all the speaker list of this uh, conference, you could do that really easily. Like you can get the dump of all the speakers and then sort it and do whatever you want. These kind of small projects, if you are able to do, so that achieves my goal is what I believe. Okay, so from next, uh, like the questions wise, uh, you can you can ask if you are not following anything. Uh, of the workshop, but uh, if you want to like keep um, some discussion kind of topics like whether scraping is really legal, ethical, those kind of questions, let's keep it to the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, end of the end of the presentation. Maybe I will be around to discuss around that. So, what happened to this? Okay, so what we are going to do is first I'll uh, give you some explanation on um, scraping generic and then about introduction to scrapy and then we will do a small exercise hands on which should be really interesting. So uh, I'll help you with like how to install etc. Don't, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So next let me give you a brief introduction. Myself Karthik Anand, I lead professional services. I head this department. So I'm not an engineer now. Uh, an a engineer was supposed to come here, but unfortunately he couldn't come and I am replacing him. So you guys may have to help me with uh, some syntax or some problem happens, okay? So, and I have a vision to synergize uh, data generation and analytics and uh, we are working towards that. So professional services is a, around 50 engineers team in Scraping Hub. So I lead the department. Also a open source promoter, like uh, 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 each of our, our engineers are allowed to like work 10 to 15% of their time to contribute on open source. What type of businesses do you work with? Sorry? Okay, so professional services is like uh, doing scraping projects for customers. So, for any sorry, oh industry. Uh, yeah, any industry. So yeah, we we are a very small company. We don't have like uh, verticals as such defined. So we work on like uh, all segments. Like any scraping project that comes to us uh, will be under my department. Does that answer your question? There are no verticals as such defined. It's everything is. Which you, uh, teams come around? Uh, e commerce. E commerce is the main thing, and sometimes news. Okay. So let's move on. Like, why is 
uh, web scraping, why can't we use APIs? So that's the primary question people ask. So APIs will have like a lot of limitations. Uh, they sometimes they don't update what is there on the website, and APIs will have a lot of restrictions. And also, like uh, there will be some competitive information that was that would be needed. Like imagine if Best Buy goes and asks, hey, Amazon, you want your price uh, of these products at what price you are selling at? What would Amazon do? They'll slap on the face, right? So we, we can't uh, rely on APIs for certain information. But competitive information is definitely needed because consumers who are we, we will get advantage out of that. So if uh, competitors have competitive information, they can sell at a very competitive price, and we consumers will get, get benefited out of it. Right, so APIs may not be the solution always. But of course, if you have some APIs, it's recommended to use rather than doing web scraping. If you get all the information, use APIs. Otherwise, we have to stick to web scraping. So another uh, new thing that is coming up with semantic web, so which is, uh, which is like how do you understand the data in, the, in a website. So, but, so like overall, around like 5% of overall websites uses this. So it's not yet uh, matured enough, or it may not get matured enough also. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But as of now, semantic web cannot be used because only 5% of the website uses that. OK, so what is web scraping? So this is a formal definition, like get the structured data of, out of unstructured uh, Websites, like websites displays data in its own way. You want to get it in a structured format like JSON, CVS, or whatever it is for uh, further analysis. So this web scraping is about getting data from an unstructured source, which is, which is mostly web, web pages, uh, into a structured data. OK. So So scrape from websites. I mean, you need to know like what kind of websites. Websites. Are there any other uh, sources you can scrape? So what I'm going to talk about, uh, mostly website, not other sources. It's, it's for websites, not mostly. But um, scraping is a uh, bigger terminology. You can like do scraping on databases and different sources. But uh, this, top, this talk is only for web scraping. OK, so what for? So we need a reason for scraping, right? So first and foremost is like monitoring price, as I already spoke about. Like you need to have competitive information. And uh, monitoring prices of competitors is one of the things. So we have a project where uh, like we scrape around like thousands of uh, e retailers to get the competitive information. So this is one of the things. And lead generation, you need to have like uh, customer contacts. All those things can be done. And aggregate information. Um, we did a recent project where uh, we collected all the articles related to Canada elections and then give it at one place. So if the, uh, there was a duration of one month, and then you have to like collect all the articles in that time related to Canada elections. So if you had to happen to do this manually, it, it wasn't possible at all. Like with web scraping, we scraped around like 30, 30 to 50 web news uh, sources, scrape, uh, filtered all the articles related to elections, and then give it in one place. Okay. And your imagination is limit. So can you, can you guess, like, can you tell like any Anyone can, can you tell some of the use cases of scraping which you may have faced or you have in your imagination? Anybody? Search hmm? Search engine? Search engine? Yeah, search engines use a lot of spiders. Like they scrape in an, so uh, they, they go to each and every website and look for keywords. Yeah, great example. Sales Sorry? Generating sales leads? Yeah. Definitely, yeah, generating sales leads so you can uh, get the contacts and filter based on based on um, the customer profile and use the data. So we have done a project where we 
collect some of the information and put it into the Salesforce directly. So very good example. OK, so let's move on. So are you like convinced like web scraping is a thing that you need to do and learn? OK, I need some of the feedback, guys. Otherwise, I will get bored. <laughs> huh? OK, so if you want to like do web scraping, one of the things you need is HTTP. You have to literally speak HTTP, right? So you have to understand HTTP very, very well. And when you, when you go out, you should be like talking, hey, get HTTP 1 slash 1 burger. And the server says 200, OK. <laughs> right? So that is, that is a kind of like involvement you should have. Like you should understand really well. OK? And OK, so th these are the standard, uh, standard headers of HTTP protocol. Yeah. You have like get, uh, get to get the data, post to uh, uh, like, uh, generate the data on the server. And put is update the data, head is to request only headers. It's a, it's a standard protocol methods. I, I think we have like some more uh, methods which is not captured here. But um, w the slide here is to like let you know like HTTP is very important to know when you have to like do web scraping. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a method. So you have a resource and a method associated with this, and the server behaves differently based on the method you give. So the normally when you make a web request on on a browser, it will be get, and when you uh, when you click on a forum, post a forum. It, was, it would be post typically. It may not be designed such a way. You can design any way. Put, put is, a, it is a principle of REST, resource representation state transfer. Um, so put is used when you have to update an existing record. So you already have a record on the server, and you need to update it. Post, yeah, you can use post also and handle on the server side to just update, oh, check, hey, this record already exists, do an update. You can do that. But um, REST says it's better to use put there, because it's an update. And HTTP equivalent for update is put. So you can use put initially. You have to use post initially. Yeah, yeah. You have to do a post. So and then, yeah, yeah. OK, and um, query, query string accept languages are there, like the websites accept certain languages. And then user agents, so you, you can change the user agent if you have, if you have observed in, the, in your mobile phone. You can actually request desktop site is an option there. So what happens typically is uh, your mobile spoofs itself as it's a, it's a desktop. So that way you will get uh, the complete web page. Which you will see on a on uh, on a on a desktop, right? So you you can play around with this. You can spoof the requests acting as like I'm a mobile phone mobile device. I'm a uh, desktop. Whatever it is, you can change the user agents. So those things are possible. Okay. So next, let's perform a request. Uh, what do you need to do a request uh, programmatically? You need uh, lib. L URL lib2, this is a standard Python library where you can like do so many HTTP requests. So, but it's really messy, complicated. So we have something called Python requests, which, which is made easy, uh, which, 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 which uh, I think it's, uh, it's on URL lib built over URL lib2, but uh, it's much more easier to use. OK, so let's do some coding. So. This is a very basic um, request, import requests and get some URL. So let's see, let's see what happens. Can I reduce the font a bit?
text. Okay, what did I get? So I get all the HTTP of this request. Okay, so basically what we did, we programmatically did a request to the website, and then we got some HTML. So what do we do with this HTML? So we got HTML, but there's no use of it, but we have to do something to get uh, interesting information out of it, right? So any guesses what, what we have to do next? If we have HTML, like to get the information that is important to you, like what do you have to do? Parse. Exactly. So what are the ways to parse? How do you parse? <laughs> XPath, exactly. So uh, if, if anyone is thinking like you can use regex, forget it. So it's, it's a mess to like do uh, parsing using regex for HTML, basically, because it's, it's not a regular language, right? So there's no syntax. If you just ignore the tag, it works. And it's really hard to find a particular information using regex. This is a standard stack overflow comment on that. So it's no use now because you know already XPath should be used. So LXML, as someone pointed already, is the, is the Pythonic binding for libxml2 and libxslt. So it's very fast and uh, it gives the power of XPath as well as the speed of C language. Um, Scrapy is, uh, is, uses X, LXML. So that's and we have other uh, HTML parsers as well. Beautiful Soup, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wrapper around HTML parser, LXML, and HTML5 lib. Sorry, is 2.7. OK. OK, so uh, we, know, we got to know like what needs to be done after we get the HTML, so which is parsing. So let's do some parsing. So this is how you do basic parsing. So you, uh, I have just uh, taken the schedule, PyCon 2015, sorry, PyData uh, 2015 schedule, and then I have parsed it for speakers, OK? So it uses the HTML here, sorry, XPath here. And then you do, you get the information needed, like text and H, uh, href. Let's run it. <coughs> oh. -ho. Oh, is it? The one when you did the request on Scraping Hub, it came back with Yes Net Log. Oh. <laughs> to get my credentials now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I'll share that. But uh, I don't think these uh, snippets are there, but the main exercise we are going to do that thing you have. And if you guys like feeling bored or and if you want to like get into the exercise directly, like please let me know. So it's completely okay with that. What's happening? Oh, 
Okay, anyway, forget it, let us move on, I think. So, it should have like given, I had tested a while ago, I do not know what happened suddenly. So, maybe Murphy's law. So, this, this should have like given all the speaker list of uh, this conference. It goes to the schedule page and then scrapes all the speaker's name. That is what it is trying to do. Uh, it is uh, it's getting the X path here, the speaker's X path and then get the text and the href associated with that and printing those. That is what it is doing. From string, so this 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 will. It creates a tree variable. Yeah, I think it it uh, creates a tree. I'm I'm really not sure about that. Sorry, I have to apologize for that. But yeah, I believe it should uh, create a tree out of that, and then get the speaker list. Okay. So, yeah, anyway. So and then like uh, this is a statement to like prove the power of XPath. So if you if, like whoever wants to like try reinvent the XPath will like mostly fail and uh, because XPath is so powerful and uh, if you want to like do parsing like that is the one thing you should really really learn. There is no other way uh, you can do parsing as of now. So. Okay, so now we got to know like we can do a request, do the parsing and get the data, uh, important data that we need. Why do we need Scrapy, right? So, can, uh, any guesses like if you, if you want to like run this code, you can, you can run one request works and if your boss asks, asks you to like run one million requests, what would happen? Hmm? Yeah, you'll get banned. That's one problem. Before that, there is another problem. Yeah, it it will take ages because this is a blocking call. This particular call is a blocking call, and it won't come back till till the request is served. It it just blocks there. So what typically happens is like this. So the the biker there is can go faster, but he's blocked by very slow moving requests there. So you can't really like overtake those. So what we need is a framework which is based on event-driven or asynchronous. You make a request, go back, and then once the request is received, you should have a callback such that you can do something with those responses, right? So it's an event-driven event driven framework is needed, which is why you need a framework similar uh, framework such as Scrapy. Scrapy is based on Twisted, which is an event-driven framework. Okay, are you guys clear? Okay, so Scrapy is an open source collaborative framework, extracting data you need websites in for simple, it extensible way. So. So uh, basically, you can write so many uh, extensions to it, right? So you can you can write extension and use it in different spiders. You write one extension and use multiple uh, spiders, and and uh, also like you can contribute to the extension re repository. Like you can write so many extra extensions and then keep it and use it in different uh, spiders. <laughs> It's open sourced and like highly used, and so many. I think there was some some number per day downloads, which I forgot, like two thousand downloads per day or something. Okay, so let's move on to the most interesting part of the workshop, which is uh, exercise. So, <clears throat> in this exercise, we are going to do uh, find out all the restaurants around this place. Okay, and then do some analytics over that. Okay, so based on like what rating uh, rating the restaurants has, and then we will create some analytics. That's the motive of this exercise. So first of all, you would need um, Scrapy to do this, and this is how you install Scrapy. Uh, do you all have Conda installed? 
So if you have Conda installed, this is the command to use. If you don't have Conda, uh, you can install it quickly. So you just go to Conda website and install the mini Conda there. Yeah, Conda is basically, yeah, it, you can, but uh, it might have some something may not work, some dependencies. So Conda always works. It's already uh, compiled as well. You, ca you can like use pip as well, but make sure the dependencies are installed. No, no, nothing is needed. Scrape is need, Scrape is already installed. Don't, don't need you need not do all these things. GitHub link for? Yeah, so I I can show, but uh, what what I but we are going to create this code. So, hands on. So, I don't know why is this network so slow. Again, we may have to like log in back. Are you guys not for facing any problem with network? Oh. Let me just data it. Okay. 
So let me know like if you're all, all set with uh, once the scrapey is installed. Anybody still installing? Sorry? Pip install requests. Okay. So yeah, rec that is if you want to use the request library. Hmm. Yeah. That's what we did before. Yeah. Yeah. To execute requests, you need to re pip install requests, right? But scrapey, uh, you know, you don't need that. So you need LXML, but it gets automatically installed. Okay. Okay. Okay, shall we move on? Okay. So whoever have installed, you can you can execute this command shell and give a HTTP com. So that should work. Is it working? Hmm? Yeah, I can give any URL. I just give example.com. You should also add the scheme http colon slash slash example dot com. Is it uh, working? Okay, let me do it again. Scrapey shell example dot com. Okay, this is to just to test your installation is fine and working well. And you in that email you will be to see NC Python com? Yes. So here you can do like uh, so many. This is this is an important aspect of uh, Scrapey. Like you, you'll get a Python prompt here and uh, do so many things here. Like uh, for example, response dot URL you'll get, and then you can do uh, response export. So this is, we are, we are directly entered uh, into the world of Scrapey, where uh, you can do response dot export to get uh, the element. H1 slash text. Thank you. Okay, so you get example domain. So if you go back and uh, check in example.com, you'll have this as the H1. Uh, H1 is yes. example domain. So that's how you, ca you can easily use XPath, response.xpath, and give the XPath, you'll get there. You'll directly go to the element. Okay, so this is, so all, did you, anybody find issues doing this? Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next aspect where you're going to create a scrapey project, okay? So to create a, to create a scrapey project, so this is a, you can come out of the shell. Scrapey start project. OK. 
can give pi data. I'm giving pi data five because I already have project still pi data four. No. You have three five install. Yeah. Uh, did you install using Conda? No. Yeah, Scrapy. How did you install Scrapy? Just by a script. Okay. So you, you you can quickly install Conda. That will also install a Python yeah, package. Huh? Yeah. I'm I'm yet to uh, give that command. Scrapy start. Project, Scrapey start project, give a project name. Okay. Scrapey start project, give a project name. That should create you a new project. If you get into the project, you should have some directory structure, something like this. So it will have uh, PyData inside that, some items, pipeline settings, spiders, and scrapey dot configuration. Okay, I'll just uh, import this project into PyCharm so that I can edit it easily. Okay, so this is how uh, the folder structure gets created. And first thing I want you all to do, go to settings and uncomment this, this line, HTTP cache enabled true. Okay, this basically doesn't make so many requests uh, to the website we are going to hit to, to be nice to the website. Go to settings.py and uh, Uncomment HTTP cache enabled. Okay. Yes, yeah, settings.py and then go to around H search for HTTP cache. Set, settings file is blank. No, no, settings file should get created. Yeah, open, open the file, vi settings. Settings.py. I think you were opening the wrong uh, file. Yeah, this one, settings.py. Okay, so uh, why we are doing this is, um, so there, there is a cache, like on disk cache. Once we enable this, all the requests made will be like stored, the responses will be stored on the disk. So second time when you make the same request, it won't actually go to the website, it will serve from the disk. So just to be nice to the website, like all of you will be hitting the same website. Uh, you shouldn't like um, make more, so many requests. So that's the reason. You need not do this always for your projects. Uh, yeah, I, th I think there should be something of that sort, or or so. Um, so, but this this thing is only for this uh, this exercise because all of us will be hitting the same website. Uh, we don't want to like overload the website, so, so uh, you need not do this always. If you are running uh, the spider for once or twice, 
is fine. You need not uh, do this cache enabled. And and for the for the if the data size is huge, you may end up like uh, putting lot of on your disk, which may not be needed. Right. So we is spoke only about one setting. One, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to some of the theory again before we move on to the coding. So what is a spider, right? So spider, this is a very basic uh, spider, right? So if you if you just uh, inherit uh, scrapy dot spider, the class will become a spider, right? So this this is the basic spider that is uh, can be written. Like what is happening is you give a name to it and def define what allowed what are the domains allowed and then give a start URL. What what it does is it will go to the start URL and start making requests. And then once the response is come uh, response arrives, it will it will execute the parse function. Okay, so basically you make a request and once the response is there. It will go and execute uh, execute the parse function, and you have the response there, and you can do whatever you want. So this basic spider is just uh, logging logging whatever you get, right? Logging logging a message. That's all uh, with with the response URL. This this is the basic spider in it itself. Okay. So uh, are you guys clear? Like how to, how to create a basic spider is you inherit scrapy.spider and make a class. The class that inherits scrapy.spider becomes a spider. And you define a parse to do how you have to parse the response. Is it clear? As back from the back there, are you guys following? Uh, the second part is once the response arrives. So wh what? How does it get executed? Is once you run the scrapy spider. I'll, I'm going to show how to run this uh, spider in a while. Once once you run the spider, what happens is it will go to this go to the start URL and start making requests. Once the response arrives, this part gets executed. Okay. So first part is making the request. Second part is uh, parsing the response. So here you write code to parse the response. So this is this is doing very basic thing. It will, it is just logging logging a message. That's all. But you can do a lot more things in parsing. Like for example, do the XPath and get the data. We are going to do that anyway. Okay. So to make clear like how to execute these things, let me just uh, execute this spider. What is what is the name of the spider? Example.com. Samples, samples, spiders, logging spider, logging spider. I have given this different name. How do you execute a spider? So once you create this small spider, you go scrapey crawl and give the spider name. So this is uh, this is from the normal shell, normal shell because scrapy is the command that's already installed, and scrapy takes uh, arguments like crawl and then the spider name. Yeah, yeah, scrapy has should have been inst uh, imported here. Here. Okay, so if you run the spider. Okay, see here info a response. Response from example.com just arrived. So we are just logging the information in this uh, spider. So basically, basically what happened, it went to the start URL, made a request, and then came here, and then printed, logged this, uh, this message. I think it's not fitting into my screen, I think. Oh, 
on the upper level. Here? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It's correct in the hmm? two JD. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So so parse it's it's when when we executed we just uh, logged a message. But we need to do like little more complex things. This is very simple. So let's uh, see how we can do that. So, so next spider. This is a little more complicated, little more not complicated, little uh, interesting. So, in this spider, what we are going to do is making a request to the same uh, example.com website, and in the parsing, we are doing little more things. What we are doing going to do is get all the h3 text and then yield it okay this is this is very important thing you should know once you do this in parse once you yield something what happens is it will be collected as an item okay item and that the, those items can be like routed to your output file okay so i'll show you how how this will help yield, yielding a message you'll get the data in in a separate file Okay, once, once we execute, you'll understand. But what we are trying to do in this parse is we are going after h3 text and then title, title is h3, we are, we are yielding that. What, what do you mean by yielding is that becomes an item in the output file. I'll show you once we execute this. Here, and we are also going after all the hrefs. That means in a page, if you have any um, URLs, Right URLs. We are going after those URLs. What this is doing is scrapy dot request is actually creating a new request out uh, from from the response you got, and in that re response you have a URL in it, and then you are creating a request to that URL. Again, it will come to a, a second request is made, and the second request also comes to the same function parse, and then finds if there are any H3 here. So are you getting a records you call here? So first of all, it goes here, comes to parse, and then yields the H3 in that page, and then goes after all the URLs in that page, makes a request to that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. This, this, this will also be an asynchronous call. Uh, sorry? So those, those controls are there. Like you can set the concurrency, how many concurrent requests you should make. Normally we will do like eight, twenty, or based upon the website, how uh, how aggressive you, you want to scrape. You can control that. There are settings for that in Scrapy. Is it clear, guys? It's very. Okay. So when when you when you. When you do scrapy crawl example.com, okay, you have to execute this from the project folder. Sorry, I might have missed that. Scrapy command uh, works only, like scrapy crawl works only from a project folder. Where in the project folder do you have the scrape? Yeah. I, uh, So we are in the samples project. So I had created a samples project beforehand. Okay, and then we'll see what are all the spiders we have. So inside samples, there will be another samples folder created. Inside this, there should be a folder called spider, spiders. Okay, and here you are seeing all the spiders. So this particular program is uh, item creator. Okay. Let me uh, let me let me show in in PyCharm. It is little better. So this is this is this this folder gets created when you do start project, and uh, inside samples inside spiders. Here is the spider code. 
item creator ok. So, I am in this folder I think it should be it does not matter I think anywhere in the folder uh, uh, project folder it should work e crawl items creator that should execute this uh, command. So, I will just uh, route this to output file ok. Okay. So, what I did is I just executed this particular program ok. So, which you, which you saw on the slide I, I have changed the name uh, forget no, do not worry about that it is ok. So, and then this func uh, this spider has been executed using the command scrappy scrappy crawl item creator and minus o output dot csv. So, that means I want to collect all the output data in output dot csv minus o if you give. So, what happens is if you see output dot csv you will get whatever you have yielded actually. So, this is title is the heading and example domain is what you have got right. So, that is the importance of yielding something. So, that is how if you yield in in parse function you will get that items in the output file right. So, whatever whatever the important information that you need to collect that should be yielded uh, like that ok. Ok, so yield scrapy dot request is actually making more requests, but uh, this example domain does not have any other URLs there is only there is no other uh, URLs. There is, there is one URL here, but it is going to a different website. So, and it is getting filtered actually. So, if you see in the log you will get to know that uh, it has been like filtered off site. So, that means, uh, this this website has been like filtered. We actually did a request here, but uh, we filtered that because allowed domains only example dot com is allowed ok ok. So, this this is basically to mo do more requests ok. So, guys following any questions back side that side are you guys ok ok let us move on ok let us move on to the this thing original problems like uh, you have like learnt to create basic spiders. Let us try to do some interesting stuff as I told like we will try to figure out all the restaurants close to this place ok. So, I will be like doing uh, this project I would like to like you also like to uh, write the code it should be able to do in it in 15 minutes or so. So, that uh, you will also have the project in hand after we finish this exercise. Ok. Ok, get to the new project that you have created. And then go, go to this uh, spiders folder and then create a new python file called tripadvisor ok. So, we are going to scrape tripadvisor for all the restaurant details around this area. First of all import scrapey and then create a, your first spider what i have to do now how do you like create your own spider yeah scrapy dot spider so that becomes your spider next uh, give a name visor give a lot domains what 
tripadvisor.com come and then start url urls it should be a list okay now we have to find out from where to start right so which uh, allo allowed domains right thank you okay so now you have, we have to find from where to start if you start scraping tripadvisor.com it will take ages to complete right so we have we should have a filtered list so let's go to the website and find out where is that filtered list. Okay, so near to, so this is already existing, I think. So New York City, and then go for restaurants got lot lot of restaurants but uh, we may have to like find an area which is close by to us okay modeling lynch okay there is Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, here, here. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. I think so. Here, there are so many offices, and we need uh, this Tribeca. There is one area here. So here also there is Tribeca, which I already knew. So we can go and filter based on Tribeca. This is one of the areas, okay, filtered it. And then we got less number of uh, restaurants around this area, okay. So now, now this, this is the URL which is, which is generic. If you go to this, there won't be filtered list, okay. What, is that, what happens is it will show, start showing all the restaurant list. Okay, so this is the exact URL actually. I think this is this might be like taking in cache or something on the search results, but uh, this is the URL where you'll get a filtered list even if you do it on, on a different browser. So this has around like a 10 to 10 pages into around like 30, which is around close to 300 restaurants around Tribeca area, okay? So what we need to do is we have to start with this URL. Our scraping should start from this URL. So I give this URL. Clear? Okay. Now the scraping starts with this URL. So the response will have all these all these restaurants and everything. So we need to we need to get information uh, of of each restaurant. Okay. So let's do step by step here. Okay. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, we have to get to this this page to get the name and the rating and the location of the of each restaurant. 
So, so to get the URL of that, that we need to find out what is the X path of uh, this link, okay. So this is a this is a class title h3 class title right so what we need to do is h3 at class equal to title chill of at href Okay, let's uh, let's verify if this export works. No. E A slash href. Okay, yeah. E A slash href. Okay, so this export should work. Let's verify once again. Okay, we got 30, 30 URLs. So what this export will give links to all these uh, these hyperlinks. Okay, all these individual restaurants. Let's uh, do a quick check. Oh, thank you. Y I E E L. Okay, so I'm just trying to like figure out what do we get the right links here. Okay, we can we well, can run this. Oh, cool. Something happened. It is giving XPath only the object. So we may have to do something here extract. Okay. Okay, cool. We got. URLs, but uh, this is not absolute URLs. This is uh, relate you. Let's do that. Let's get absolute URL. Is equal to response dot URL join. So these are the scrapy uh, functions. URL. This should give us the absolute URL. Oh, cool. I can expand this, right? Okay. So let's verify. So, a couple of uh, URLs if we are getting the right URLs. Okay, Nobu, yeah. Nobu is here. And another one. Primand. So it's here. Okay, so we get, got all the URLs. So 
you are, we retrieve the URLs for each of the pages that we need. Yeah, that's what we are going to do now. Sure. So this was a test. Okay, we got all the URLs that we need. So next, what we need to do is so we should we shouldn't be yielding here. So rather, we have to make a request for each of those URLs, right? So what we will do here is make a request. This one? Yeah, just uh. to the very top. That's all. Or you remove the top portion, the bot name, the title module, or you have it right there. It's there. Okay, thank you. Is, uh, is there any problem? What's happening? Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry, not this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so if you go to this, uh, this is the this is the start URL that we started with, and I, we need to get the hyperlinks for this thing, right? Each of the restaurant. So what I did is I in, uh, inspected this what what sort of item it is, and then got to know it's a H3 and the class is title. Okay. And then inside that you go to A and then href. This is the this is the URL you need. So, and that's how I got H3 class title inside that A and then href. Okay. So, we need to yield here. So, to yield scrapey dot request that we saw earlier, then uh, this is the absolute URL we need. Okay, and then uh, what we have to do is this is the parser which can parse this kind of page, right? This is the this is the page. It's a, it's a listed. The restaurants are listed, but what we actually need is an another parser to parse this kind of page, right? So, so what we need to do is like we need to write another parser to to scrape these kind of pages. So we are actually creating requests for this page here. Here we're actually creating uh, requests, but we have to we have to give a different parser for it. Okay, so how you do that is give a callback, and then serve dot Okay, so we're going to write a new parser here. So I name it as parse restaurant. Okay. So clear so far. So we are going to write a new parser for to scrape a page where you have like restaurant details. Okay, now we need to identify XPath few uh, important XPath that we would need uh, in this page. For example, the name, rating, and then longitude, latitude. That's that's we will capture. So location of the restaurant, its rating, and its name. Okay. So here. In this image, we will have um, the ratings. Okay, if you inspect here, if you inspect here, and then this is the image, and then it has the rating value, the property is rating value, and the content is 4.5. This I know because I have already like prepared for this where you get rating, so I know here. So we can we can deduce um, the X path for this, okay? Rating is equal to image.
equal to rating value u and then what we need is content okay this should give us the rating information let's see is this the right x path okay we are getting that cool uh, and then we also need to do extract maybe first because we will have only one in this page okay clear so let's yield this okay is it clear now clear any doubts Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, this is okay. I need to add name and etc. Also, so I thought of like let's test once before we move on. Okay, so it it should give only rating now. Let's see how how the execution goes. Hey, did you get what you what you wanted? You asked me to get back to okay. So let's run it. Okay, we got all ratings for the first page actually. Okay, now what we had to also do is get the name and uh, name and other la latitude, longitude information, right? So we have, I have already identified that those information are available in, in a map here. Okay, so this this has like all the information we need. So this I have done my homework to like understand where it is. So this is something you may have to do for your projects. You have to identify where your interesting information is there, identify that location, and then uh, start writing the X path. So here I know like uh, uh, this map container has all the information that we need. So are you guys able to see that really? Hmm? Okay, so uh, uh, it's it's a div class equal to map container. That's where you have the information. You have data latitude, data longitude, and the name. Okay, let's let's create XPath for that, and then get the name under the details. Okay, is equal to response what? Was it due? Container. And then data name dot extract first. We also need to do the same thing for latitude. Longitude, here we need to change it to lat and LNG, longitude. So let's wait, test the X path once. Okay, good. So the text path is correct and latitude export should also be correct. Okay, so longitude. So 
So it's a it's a developer tool. If you go to Chrome and then you do command uh, command F command F in Mac. Hmm? So there should be some uh, way here. Uh, the command F works, but I don't know what command in Windows. Okay, so and also we can add URL. Okay, so I think we should have all the information that we need now. Hey, URL rating, URL, this is the rating, this is the name, this is the longitude and this is the latitude. Okay, so we got all the information that we need, but um, there is a small problem here because it's only scraping the first page, right? We need to, like, only first page information is not sufficient. What we need to do is we need to add requests for other pages as well. So, as you remember, this is parse is the function that actually parse the list of uh, restaurants. Right? So we need to create requests for the next hyperlink. So how do you do that? Export of, we have to find where the next link is there in this page. So if you go here and see there is a next button here and we need to like identify what is the export of that. Right, if you inspect here. So this is the this is the hyperlink, and if you can see here, there is a text next. So it becomes easy for us. Like what you do is, a uh, text equal to next. So this should be. Is it right? Let's verify. Yeah, we got it. We need to just close this. Okay, so this this is the URL uh, hyperlink for the next button. Okay, we got the export for the next button, and we need to extract it first. Okay, so are you following so far? Next, we need to also do the same thing for this also. Absolute URL we already know. We should only get the relate you absolute URL will do next next absolute URL okay and now we need to what we have to do what we have to do now we have to yield are you guys following or so it's the lunch time, I guess, hungry. <laughs> so, by the way, what time you have to like break for lunch? 
now <laughs> 20 minutes okay give me 10 minutes okay quickly finish okay yield we need to yield the response so oh, sorry you reminded me of lunch now <laughs> scrapy dot request of this next absolute URL and call back what should I set the call back parse. Yeah, exactly self dot parse right okay then this should be it so this this will this becomes a recursive function recursive call to this parse this parse function is a parser for parsing the page that lists the restaurants and parse restaurant is the parser that parses the detailed page right yeah so i think this should be it hopefully it works let's see Hey, cool, we got something. Let's see what it is. Okay. So we got. Hey. We got only thirty one. Then Okay, let me just verify the code. There should be some problem. Just debugging. So line 15. Okay, so let me let me just cover uh, the other part. I wanted to cover like how what visualization we can do with our with the data that is existing. Okay, we have some data. So we have something called CortoDB, right? So if you go and like uh, create an account here, so you can actually like just dump this CVS data and do some visualizations. Does it 
just depending upon the class you play. So how would you design the spider so it, you know, if for some reason it can't find a link, like how do we make it resilient and change it? You mean to say like even even the website changes, uh, it should work kind yeah, of thing? Is, is it possible? Like is there any way to like intelligently look for links? Yeah, we, we, we do have like done some something of that sort, but um, it's not very, very like uh, foolproof. Like you can do some guessing work, like okay, if if it is um, if you want to like uh, get the name of the person, if you find an email address, you can do some intelligent stuff to, to check for surrounding things. Um, but um, but it's very hard to like write uh, write a spider for changing websites. You would have to like change with small modifications. It might have like changed some X path. It's a it's a minor fix in the spider. But um, it's very hard to write uh, like resilient uh, spiders. Okay, I think it's like taking a little more time than it usually takes. So what I'll show you is like I have already like created some other uh, output files like generated out of the same things. I can I can show that in the map view. So this is this is something that you will get like end of the day like you have you know like where is the concentration of uh, restaurants around this area like based on the rating. So if higher the rating, like the darker is what it is showing because um, this uh, coroplet is based on, on the rating. So I have chosen the rating here. So if it is five, and then, then it shows really darker. So and then you can add like uh, add which columns to show when you click on it, etc. So it, it, it is showing the name and the rating of the, uh, of the restaurant. So, so what basically the point is like with with this you can actually like know where is the where is the high rated uh, restaurant concentration is and then just you you go to that area so that the the options and the better food you get it will be more there's the there's a primary like business uh, case i wanted to show here so so you know like here here there are very less uh, restaurants and also like less less rated if you go here there are high rated more restaurants and probably you take that route. So this was this was the intention to show a business value behind scraping. Okay. So okay, I had a few more slides, but I know you are all tired and like break for lunch. So I'll just right away go to the last one, like mandatory sales sales slide. So it's like what we do uh, in Scraping Hub. So this is like the off-the-shelf data sets. We sell directly some of the data sets and uh, web scraping projects. Cloud-based platform is there where you can actually run your spiders. You can deploy spiders there, and, and it, will serve, serve, it will run on the servers. And you can, you can hit like try scrapinghub.com by data NYC to get uh, registered, play around, use our platform for free. Like you can run one concurrent job, one job, uh, and keep data for around seven days. You can try out, try that. Okay. <laughs> Hope you guys followed. But I can share you uh, the, the GitHub code. Uh,